In this video, we'll show how you can put a list control on a UX component and also some data bound controls and then automatically populate the data bound controls uh, when the user navigates in uh, the list control. So you can see here as we click on a different entry in the list, we're um, uh, populating the data bound controls over there. And you can also see that when we make an edit in the uh, data bound controls, for example over there and then go and commit that record, that the list is automatically uh, refreshed. And let's go back there and do that. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, start from scratch and then recreate this dialog um, so that it operates uh, exactly like this. So let's go now back to the um, uh, control panel and create a new uh, UX component. And then let's go now to um, controls. And I'm going to put some controls uh, on the uh, um, uh, UX component. So I want a control for uh, uh, customer ID, contact name, uh, city, um, and uh, country. So now we've placed our, our controls over there. Now let's go and uh, bind these controls to the uh, data source. So the, our data source is going to be uh, the Northwinds database. So we'll go back to data binding now and we'll bind. We'll choose a SQL connection string. So we'll go there to uh, Northwinds and we'll choose the customer table from Northwinds. Um, and there's our, um, our uh, data definition. And now let's go and bind these controls. So I'll just choose the automatic. Uh, oh, I see I've spelled contact name there incorrectly, so that's why it didn't automatically come back. So that's uh, bound now. So now we've actually bound these controls to um, the Northwinds uh, database. And next we're going to go put a list control on. So let's just wrap all of these controls here inside a container. Um, and then put another container above that. Uh, insert before. And uh, inside this container, let's go and put a list control. So we'll go now to our list controls. And we'll choose uh, list 1. And now we'll go and define our list. So we'd like this to be a list that's based on a SQL data source. And we'll choose again Northwinds. And we'll choose the uh, customer table. And then we'll choose, say, the customer ID, uh, company name, contact name, city uh, and country fields. So we've chosen quite a few fields there. Now I'll go back to the list layout and choose those fields in the layout. Let's go and make this list a little bit wider. Let's make it, uh, say, six inches, uh, six inches wide, and then click OK, and then go to properties and choose um, a nice style. So when we go over to working preview now, we see there's our list, and when we make selections in the list, we're not currently populating the um, data bound controls. Also, let's move the data bound controls to the right of the list. So we'll just go there and turn off the break. And now what we want to do is uh, when the user clicks on an item in the list, we want to populate those controls over there. So we'll bring up the list builder again and we'll go to properties now. And what we want to do is when the user clicks on an item in the list, there is going to be a, an event that fires and it's going to be the on select event. So we're going to go now to find the code in the on select event to populate the controls in the list. Let's pause now and pick this up in the next uh, video. So we're continuing our discussion on how to uh, populate the list, uh, the data bound controls when an item in the list is selected. So let's go to the uh, on select event and here we need to write the JavaScript but um, we want to use action JavaScript uh, because that's much easier than writing the code by hand. So let's go over here to run JavaScript action, to, uh, sorry, create an, a JavaScript action and uh, create a new action called, say, uh, populate controls. 
and then uh, edit this action. So we're going to say that we would like to um, populate controls in a UX component from with data from tables, and then we're going to specify uh, where the primary key uh, for the record we'd like to populate uh, should be read from. Well, we want to read it from a dialog control, and the control that we would like to read from is the list. So there's the list control over there. So we're going to basically be reading the primary key of the record that we want to fetch from the current value in the list. So now we've done that, and uh, click Save. And then um, we can just click OK now. And now what we'd like to do is run this action. So we'll just go there and choose Populate Control. So the JavaScript that's going to be run in the on select event on this list now is this action that we've just defined. But there's one more thing we need to do on the list, which is specify that when the user clicks on an item uh, on a row in the list, that the list value is being set to the primary key of that current row. So let's go back now to the list. And we'll go back to the data source here. And we can see that the list has something called a return value. And we'd like to set the return value to the primary key of the current row. And then let's go and specify what the primary key of this table is, which is customer ID. So now we've got that defined. So now we can go ahead and click Close. And then switch over to Working Preview. And now when I click on an item, we can see that the list is automatically being populated. Um, as we move around uh, uh, making different selections in the list. So next, uh, let's go and see now how we can add um, save um, uh, a save button so that edits over here are saved back to the database and also that the list gets uh, updated. So let's go save this um, dialog, uh, this UX component away. So we'll just go there and call it, say, uh, demo UX. And now let's go back to our builder here and choose under the Define Controls category. We're going to go and choose a Submit and Reset button. And what we also want is a uh, New Record button. So let's go there and choose the New Record button. And let's turn off the break after Reset. So now what we have is uh, Submit, Reset, and the New Record button. But when we press the Submit button, nothing's going to happen yet because we haven't defined a server-side event to fire in the After dialog validate. So let's go now and say that after, the, after we um, validate the dialog, we'd like to save the data. So we'll go there. And after we save the data, let's just say we'd like to edit the record that was just submitted. Uh, and here uh, we can also specify that after the data has been saved, we'd like to automatically refresh um, some list controls that are, are on this component. So I'm going to check that box there and then go there and choose list one. So now if I hadn't done this then after I made a, uh, a edit to one of the data bound controls and then saved that record the current row in the list would not have been updated. So let's go now and check this out. Uh, so go over there back to working preview click on an entry so there's London and let's change this to say Manchester and then hit the submit button and we can see that the list now is also mad automatically updated uh, to reflect the edit that we just made. So let's pause now and then look at one final um, refinement that we can make to this component. So um, the next refinement that we'd like to make to the component is to automatically populate the data bound controls when the component is initially rendered. So you can see here that when we initially render this component, um, the, uh, the data bound controls are not um, populated and also there's no current selection in the, uh, uh, in the list. So um, when I click there, then we finally get the um, uh, data bound controls to be populated. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go back to the list definition over here and edit it and I'm going to go to list properties and I'm going to specify that a, a null selection is not allowed. So that means that when the um, list is initially rendered there's going to be a row in the list with focus. So here we go and we can see now that the list, this row has focus 
uh, but it still hasn't populated the items in uh, data bound controls and the reason for that is that um, the value of the list is only set um, a little bit later in the in, um, in the code path so what we'd like to do is uh, fire an event in the after list render event to go and populate um, the controls so I'm going to go back now to my list definition and go back to list properties and uh, if I look at the on select event I'm going to just copy that um, code to the clipboard and I can see here that we have another event called the after render complete now this event fires after the list has rendered but it's actually going to fire before the value of the list has been set so if I would have just put this um, um, code over here we would see that we still wouldn't get the uh, desired effect so you can see the list has a selected row but we still don't have the populated uh, data over there so we're going to go and put a timeout uh, so a small delay on this code so we go back to our more events and then the after render complete and then we're going to just use the JavaScript set timeout function so set timeout and then function and then this is the code that we'd like to run and uh, we'll just put in a hundred millisecond delay so let's go back now and then save it and then go back to working preview and now we can see that the list is populated um, when the dialog when the component is initially rendered so what we've shown over here is how easy it is to uh, put a data bound uh, list control on a UX component how to put data bound controls on the UX component and then how to link the two together so that the data shown in the data bound controls reflects the current row in the uh, list control and also how edits uh, in the data bound controls can be automatically reflected back uh, into the uh, list control and not only edits but also new records as well so if I go there and add a new record now and let's just go here and give this a primary key of say YYY and I'll go here and I'll say uh, Tim Smith and uh, Boston USA and then go ahead and commit that record we can see that um, the record would have been added had I um, uh, not basically violated a, a, a rule here that says that company name cannot be blank so what I would need to do to actually fix this is go and add the company name over here as one of the bound controls and then uh, repeat the exercise so let's pause right now while I go and add um, company name to the bound controls and then come back and uh, repeat the exercise so now we're just going to go there and add in a company name so we're going to go back to our data binding and then uh, choose company name over there and bind that so now we've got that um, bound um, and we must also set the list control to be a non-updatable control so let's say that it's not bound and uh, that it's not updatable okay so now we can go back now uh, to um, working preview again there again choose new record and just type in say why 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 contact name actually we want four wise uh, contact Let, uh, let's actually pause now and pick this up in the next video so uh, continuing from where we left off let's go here and type in say Tim Smith and the company will be Alpha and the city will be uh, Boston USA and now let's try to commit this record and we can see now that um, uh, we've corrected the error uh, uh, which was preventing us from adding the row because the database was set up to not allow null values in the company name field so we went back and added company name to our uh, component so now we're able to um, add new records uh, to the uh, database and then when we add the new record you can see here that the list uh, got updated and the new record that we just added was added automatically to the bottom of the list so we've shown now that both edits to the data bound controls and inserts to the uh, uh, table 
uh, are reflected automatically in the list control without you use um, having to actually write any code at all. So it's a very powerful functionality uh, shown over here um, with the ability to automatically tie the data bound controls on the component to the list control. Thank you very much for watching.